I think you have to use your best drug first. I think you have to really seize the opportunity with these patients and give them your best drug. Uh, and that best drug is, is based on not only its, its efficacy, but its toxicity. And I think thankfully and fortunately, we have other drugs that work, oral agents that work if first or second generation TKIs don't work. Um, so for me, I try to make the best decision up front that delivers the best uh, chance of response, but also is mindful of, of toxicity. Uh, unfortunately, we're not curing these patients, uh, and all of the efforts that we deliver in terms of targeted therapies are still palliative. Now, we're making strides, but uh, patients should receive the best drug first, uh, the one that has the best response rates, but also uh, factors in toxicity. So I always try to make, uh, use my best drug first, but with the, with the caveat being, if that drug doesn't work, there are other drugs down the pike that are approved now uh, that may work just as well once patients develop progression on first or second generation TKI. I think anytime we make uh, decisions for our patients who are EGFR positive up front with a TKI, uh, we have to be ready to make dose modifications or dose reductions um, due to the severities or potential severities of the adverse events. Now, many patients that we treat, uh, we don't need to make dose reductions. Uh, I would say probably in 20 to 30 percent of our patient population in my practice, we make some dose reductions. And that can be with a fatinib if we're starting at 40. Uh, we often have to go down to 30 uh, if they're experiencing uh, a grade three rash or diarrhea. Uh, and erlotinib as well. If we start out with erlotinib, I, I think that 150 is the starting dose, but I'm ready to make a dose reduction to 100. And I think this is where care gets very nuanced and individualized. I think we have to be proactive about managing adverse events with TKIs. I think we need to be comfortable uh, knowing what the proper management is in terms of the rash and diarrhea, but also comfortable either holding the dose if the AE is very severe and reducing the dose. And those, there's all kinds of algorithms online I encourage people to look at. Uh, these drugs work very well, but they do have an AE profile that needs to be, uh, that physicians need to be cognizant of and know how to manage moving forward. Dose adjustments with EGFR TKIs generally does not lead uh, to a compromise in efficacy. Uh, and there's data on this. I think even with a fat nib, we know that patients who are on 30 milligrams of fat nib probably experience less toxicity, but do just as well as the 40 milligram dose. This is not robust data, uh, but certainly has been out there. And I think we know that there's probably therapeutic value in e even uh, 50 milligrams of erlotinib. Now, I certainly don't go that low generally, but these are, these drugs sometimes need to be uh, adjusted, the dosing, and there needs to be dose reductions. And generally that doesn't come at the cost of efficacy. Well, that doesn't mean I don't start at the highest dose possible, uh, but certainly be mindful that when you're reducing the dose, you're probably not sacrificing efficacy moving forward. So first generation and second generation TKIs are lotnib, jafitnib, afatnib, of course come with AEs, adverse events that we need to be mindful of. Uh, the most common are rash and diarrhea, but certainly par uh, uh, fatigue is out there. Uh, we see that uh, frequently in our patients, uh, keratoconjunctivitis or other ocular disorders we need to be uh, mindful of. And all of these uh, AEs, you have to be proactive uh, about managing them. And that pro, um, being proactive means one, being ready to make dose reductions or dose interruptions, that's okay. Withholding the dose for a few days while the patient recovers is okay and perhaps resuming at a lower dose once you restart. But being proactive also means knowing how to manage these AEs specifically. Now for, for fatigue, there's not a lot we can do other than hold the dose, but for rash and diarrhea, I would say for, for patients who experience rash, uh, certainly uh, doxycycline, orally, uh, clindamycin or steroid creams and gels can certainly help out. And for diarrhea, I tell patients uh, to go ahead and get Imodium even before they start taking the, dr uh, the drug, going to uh, their local pharmacy, getting the Imodium, and being proactive about that. Um, that's important. Um, so those are really two measures that I always tell patients. And I tell patients up front that these uh, adverse events will probably happen and, and we will be proactive about managing them. You may need to go on doxycycline for your rash. You may need some creams throughout the, 
throughout your treatment course. And, and, and you also, of course, with the diarrhea as high as 60 to 70 percent in these patients who take TKIs, Imodium is very important to make sure that they're proactive about taking that.